guys, Templar here. Now today I'm going to be talking to you guys about a new type of weapon I got, in which is this, a Falcata. Now this is actually a pretty cool type of sword. This is from cultofathena.com, and now this was given to me by my relatives, the same as another type of weapon for my birthday, so yeah. Uh, but yeah, this is a pretty cool weapon. This is a chopping style weapon, as you can tell. No. The cool part about this thing is, it's a bone handle style falcata. I don't know if you guys can see that, but that's bone material right here, mostly, with bronze brass painting attached to the blade. Now, actually, this entire thing itself is one whole material. There is no separation from the hilt area. The only thing that's not even metal is, the only thing that's not all the same is the bone itself. Cause I'll have you guys take a look. Cause to, oh, sorry about the shine. You can see right here you can tell what I mean. There is no difference because the blade is part of the handle guard here. Which actually that's kind of why I favored these type of old fashioned type swords. This is actually probably the most coolest weapon you can ever get your hands on. Uh, that's part of the ancient era. This is used by the ancient Celts, as I gotta have you guys know. The weight is actually substantial to having it being known as a chomping weapon. Ugh, chomping weapon. Because one cut equals technically a dead man. And in today's society, this might be perfect for a uh, type, of type of weapon to protect yourself on the streets. Say if, like, somebody was gonna come up and rob you or something. This would probably be perfect. <laughs> but yeah, as well, the handle guard here, as you can tell, uh, let me just try to get that in the image reach for you. As you can tell, it could stop. If my C, this is pretty much a uh, little guard here. The reason it loops around is because if it gets caught in something, I can easily pull it out. Now, it doesn't give uh, much guard to the hand, but technically that's the thing about it. This, well, it's, it's already heavy enough, and with that downward cut, I can easily <laughs> cut a guy in half. Now, this does come uh, with no scabbard or sheath with it, which is kind of disappointing, so yeah. But yeah, this is still, though, a pretty cool weapon. And pretty much does the uncommon carbon steel, yes. And another perfect part about this thing is also the thing, like, since it doesn't come with a scabbard or anything, you gotta sharpen this yourself, because when it came in, it had to arrive blunt, so. I had to still sharpen this, and I still am, which is pretty cool. But now, this is actually more of a straight blade version, which I like, because it's more infantry style. Hey guys, my ass. Templar, what do you mean by temp by infantry style? Well, there's a difference between a cavalry and an infantry version, Falcata. And that would be the straighter the blade, the more you know it's infantry. Curve in the blade, it's cavalry. Pretty much, that's the only difference. But yeah, I do love this weapon a lot, and I probably might be making videos on it very soon on how you use it and how well it works. If you guys want to see that, let me know that in the comments below for that. Now, as you can also tell, there's even a ridge line here that kind of resembles a secondary falcata. Now, these were technically used in the bro late Bronze Age and modified more in the Iron Age with steel. But yeah, this is actually a pretty heavy weapon, actually. Most of the weight is at the end of here, kind of like a machete, except this is not a machete. In fact, this has the weight of an axe when you hit somebody, because if you guys don't know anything about the difference between an axe head and a sword, axes technically go through a body a lot better than a sword does. Well, the Celt Iberians invented this to pretty much get through somebody. And, well, we can see why the Romans, the Greeks, the Carthaginians, and everybody in the Mediterranean use this weapon, rather than their own. 
pretty much it's got a heavy weight to it, which I like. Because technically you got to go with the sword in the process. So yeah, but as well, let's take a look at the curvature of the blade. Now this extra curve right here, this is the killing point. As you guys can tell, where the bump is, that's the killing point. You hit the guy with that, he's going to get really killed. Here though is the cutting point. Say like you missed your target, and you just press it up against his, like say, unprotected regions of his body, like say his shoulder for example, it could just cut the body from down or anywhere. Still though, this is an extremely dangerous weapon, so don't even think about playing around with this. As well, I guess you guys might want to uh, chop some trees with something like this. Me, I rather will not damage the blade because I kind of honor the way of the warrior. If you dishonor your weapon, it will dishonor you in the process. So, yeah. Might as well take a good look at that beautiful decorations on there. That is actually pretty cool of, of the bronze brass plating, painting on there. Because, yes, this is painting right on here. This is not forged. This is this part of the same metal. Which is actually really cool to me because I just love these weapons. But as well, if you guys want one for your own, I will put a link down below for you guys, so that way you guys can buy one of these. Anyways, guys, if you found this helpful, let me know down in the comments below. If you guys want to know more about it, also let me know down in the comments below. Please subscribe, like videos, and as well, actually, also, pretty much, uh, if you guys want to buy one of these, just go down to the link below. Have a good day, guys.